What's up everybody, back again with another Mage Tower guide, and today we're taking a look at the dreaded Cruel Encounter as a Brewmaster Monk. Now I want to start off by talking a bit about gear. I've seen a lot of guides talking about gear from past expansions, old crafted gears and such, to stack as many sockets as possible, get the right trinkets and all that jazz. And it will for sure help, but it's far from mandatory. I did this in my current raid gear as a Brewmaster with Shadowlands gears, enchants, gems, trinkets, you name it. And sure, I do have 5 sockets in my raid gear, which of course helps, but nothing from old expansions at all, and you can do it without sockets. Now the only old expansion items I actually did use was the food bear tartar, as it gives you a movement speed buff anytime something dies, and there's a lot of adds that die often. But if you are lacking damage, I can recommend, if you can get your hands on it, the cruciform vein ripper from painsmith, as its proc deals a lot of damage, especially to the adds. Mechagon punch card trinket with Cyclotronic Blast, and the Trinket Hymnal of the Path from Bastion World Quest, as they all deal a ton of damage. Now other than that, keep in mind that your Covenant abilities and Conduits don't work here, and neither does any legendary effect. Now with that out of the way, let's talk talents. There's nothing weird here really, cookie cutter build using statue. So Chi Wave, Chi Torpedo, Light Brewing, Summon Black Ox Statue, Damp and Harm for Last Phase, Rushing Jade Wind, and High Tolerance. So yeah, the only important thing here is the statue really. Now with that said, let's go over the fight. Starting off with the main mechanics, and if you already know how the mechanics work, just skip ahead a bit. Main goal is to defeat the two bosses without Velen or Corvo dying. Velen will spawn orbs every 30 seconds or so that last for 2 minutes on the ground, and you can have up to 4 of them on the ground at the same time. If you step on one of these, you, Velen and Corvo will instantly get full health, and all enemies will be blinded slash disoriented for a few seconds. So it is extremely useful, however, you want to use as few of them as possible in phase 1, at least not in rapid successions, you start phase 2 with between 3 and 4 orbs up, but more on this soon. But like I said, as an extra lifeline to get some breathing room or get out of a dicey situation, they should for sure be used in phase 1 as well. Now let's start with phase 1, which is Inquisitor Varus. Boss itself has an aura or on-ground effect around it that reduces your max HP or, well, stamina for every stack you get. Getting more than 5 stacks of this will make things a bit dicey. He also spam casts Mindren, which does a bit of damage, but it's only really scary if you're above 5 stacks and you have adds on you. But the biggest thing of all is that Varus will also cast Drain Life, which has to be interrupted as soon as possible or the boss will heal, eventually to full health. Now I recommend using a weak aura for this you'd never miss when he starts casting it, and I will link this in the description below. Now throughout the fight, boss will also spawn adds eyeballs, infernals, and nether horrors. The eyeballs will fixate or focus on you every now and then, and if you don't face it and look at it, the eyeball will knock you back. As for the infernals, they will do a frontal AoE cone knockback, and if you get hit, you'll be flying. If, or rather, when this happens, you can transcendence to get back if you're fast, or use a goblin glider to get back so you don't fly off the platform. These infernals will also pulse out a bit of AoE damage and slowly kill themselves. Now, once they're dead, they'll only go inactive for a bit before actually respawning, so eventually you'll have up to 3 infernals running around, depending on how fast you nuke down Varys. And lastly there's the nether horrors, 4 of them spawn from portals around the room, they slap a bit and they will beeline straight for Velen, and they will kill him pretty fast if you ignore them. And this is where the statue helps, just keep it on top of Velen at all time and he never gets slapped. You still need to kill them though. Now in phase 2 the eyeballs no longer spawn, but the nether horrors will still spawn, and the infernals will still knock you around. But instead of Varus, you now face Cruel. And Cruel has three abilities, Annihilate, Nether Stomp, and Twisted Reflection. Annihilate deals a ton of damage and increases damage taken by Cruel by 110%. And you can kinda safely survive three or four of them, but the fifth one is a bit sketchy. Nether Stomp, Cruel hops on your location, spawns Fire Puddles underneath you and slows you. Fire Puddle is really bad, it does a ton of damage, so you wanna move out of it fast. And Twisted Reflection, if this cast goes off, any damage you do to Cruel heals him for 5%, and this debuff lasts for 45 seconds, so don't forget to interrupt it. On top of this, every now and then beams will spawn at the edge of the platform and travel across. If you get hit, you take a bit of damage, but they also drag you with them, but you can just move through them. Now with that out of the way, let's break down phase 1. First of all, you can approach this in two ways. Either you try to rush down Varys to get as few infernals as possible, so you don't have to dodge three of them in phase 2, and you don't have to stay as long 
strong in phase 1 reducing the chance of brain farts really. However, it means blowing combat potion and possibly drums in phase 1 to do so, and you do play phase 1 a bit riskier because of it. I managed to shave off one infernal by using combat pot only, but it does mean you have to play phase 2 without all of your consumables. Or you can take it slow and steady, deal with phase 1 for a bit longer, dodge an additional infernal in phase 2, but you have access to drums and combat pot, making phase 2 a lot shorter and less of a headache. I tried both of them and I tend to go more for the slow approach as I like dealing with cruel as fast as possible, and I personally do not find dodging the infernal to be a big issue, but I know that some do. Either way, pre-pull you want to put statue near Velen, and on pull you pop summon Nizao, and if you're trying to skip an infernal you can also use combat pot here. Stay in until you have around 6 or 7 stacks, make sure to interrupt drain life, if you cast it while you're outside resetting stacks use paralyze to interrupt it, and whenever you're outside setting stacks you can vivify yourself if needed and you should poke any eyeballs that might have spawned and remember to look towards them if you're linked with them by a beam or else you'll fly away. When the adds spawn they rush to Velen but your statue will taunt them off. Pick them up either by taunting statue or just spin to win and you just drag them on top of Varys as soon as your stacks have reset and then just continue to cleave them down but focus damage on Varys and after this you move out at around 5 stacks all the time. Now when the infernal spawn start straight sideways as soon as they get close and you'll never or rarely ever get hit by the cone. I also try to put down transcendence often and a lot as I move around the platform in case my brain goes dumb dumb and I get knocked off. And you can also like I said use goblin gliders get back if you get knocked off. And that's pretty much it for phase 1. It does get more hectic the longer phase 1 goes on but the playstyle is the same. Interrupt very strain life, poke eyeballs and vivify yourself when you reset stacks, pick up horrors and AoE them down on top of Varys as often as possible, run in a circle when infernals are up and don't waste damage on them. And don't forget that you can use a few of Velen's orbs as well to get some breathing room, just not all the time because you want to enter phase 2 with at least two of them up. And the last thing about phase 1, if you're going for the slow approach, if possible try to kill Varys right after a or all infernals have died, and again if possible during or right after nether horror spawns, because if you can start phase 2 without any adds, it gives you a lot of breathing room to just stand still and tunnel cruel. And it's not the end of the world if you extend phase 1 a little bit to accomplish this, unless you're trying to push before infernal spawns. Now let's talk phase 2 instead. As soon as Varys dies, cruel the slapper lands and any unpoked eyeballs despawn. If available, pop drums, combat pot, summon Nizao and full focus on cruel. Don't miss interrupting his twisted reflection, if you miss it, you can't defeat him. Make sure your statue is up and alive near Velen and cleave down adds on top of Cruel, but focus your damage on Cruel. Keep sidestepping or moving in a circle if there are infernals up, and move through the beams to travel across. Avoid getting hit by three at the same time as the pushback gets a bit annoying then. And make sure to move out of all the fire puddles when Cruel stomps. Fire puddles hurt, fire bad. And as far as Cruel's annihilates and extending the enrage goes, eventually you will get one shot by his annihilates. The first one you can survive with absolutely nothing, stagger only. Second with Celestial Brew, 3rd with Damp and Harmon Celestial Brew, 4th with Celestial Brew and Senmed. But I try to avoid the 4th one as a lot can go wrong, but it's easier just to not get them. And you do this simply by delaying the casts, either by stunning in cap with paralysis or stepping on one of Velen's balls as soon as the boss casts it. However, he will instantly recast it when he stops being CC'd, but you can keep doing this to add more and more time. I usually stun and in cap his first cast, then I use one or two orbs on his second cast, and stun plus one or two orbs on his third cast, and then whatever I have left when the boss casts the fourth one, but he should be close to dead when that happens. You can also use fewer orbs early on and just focus on extending the fourth or fifth annihilate for as long as possible by just chaining orbs back to back. Both works very well. And there you go! If you have any questions at all about this fight, hit me up in the comments or become a patron, and get access to the Stanky Discord where you can get help with anything PvE related. Related raids, mage tower, sunken temple, you name it. And don't forget all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, and subscribe, it really helps me out. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.